Being married to an entrepreneur is a unique and amazing experience. Trust me, it is because I have been on this journey since day one when I got married. So not so long ago, I posted a post uh, on my Instagram and you guys went mad with so many questions. So I thought I'm going to do this video to answer most of the questions that you asked me. So this experience is full of ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. And to tell you the truth, a lot of adrenaline every single day. But it has got its benefits. And you know the benefits that everybody is after. The freedom, the lifestyle, uh, making your own decisions, traveling the world, uh, supporting your partner. But it is not an easy journey. While it's not an easy journey, it has got plenty rewards. So why am I sharing this with you? simply because I care about you. I think it's important for you to make decisions that are good for you. And if you at all are with an entrepreneur, there are just a few things that you would need to be able to understand so you can be a good and amazing supportive partner. And if you're dating or you're planning to date an entrepreneur, then this video will probably help you with some of those things because I have been on this journey for 20 years. We will be celebrating our 20 year anniversary this year. And so, for sure, I've had my fair share of this experience. So I hope that my tips are going to help you get better at becoming a supportive partner when you're married or a supportive partner when you're dating or a supportive partner when you are planning to date an entrepreneur. So here are some of the comments that you guys commented on my Instagram. Here is one. It says, I would like to see this addressed. It's amazing that you are talking about this as a woman entrepreneur. Totally different set of expectations when it's a woman, right? Uh, somebody says, I have got three businesses. I volunteer and I've got a lifestyle that I like, but my husband struggles to support me. So how do you do it for a guy? Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to answer these questions. So in my case, it happens that we are both entrepreneurs and I am a full-time entrepreneur running businesses. My husband is a full-time entrepreneur doing his own thing, yet we still have got a home that we have to come to and be married and be husband and wife and wear our hats and still enjoy life. And trust me, guys, this has been, this been the case for 20 years. So you can imagine the level of stresses, the level of pressures, the responsibilities. But guess what? If I'm here talking about this, it's, it means it can be done, right? But it's just understanding a few things. So here are my 10 tips that I've put together. There could be more, but I thought these 10 is a good place to start to understand your entrepreneur that you're hooked up with. So number one, be ready to embrace their active minds and their energy. Entrepreneurs' minds are always on the go. They are always thinking about something. If they start something, an idea is working and that project is working, guess what? They're not going to settle for that. They are going to continue to try and start something else. So the fact is they are always starting something. They are always failing and probably they are always winning, but the pressure of starting is always on. So really the challenges are how do you embrace this energy when they are always having their minds on something else? So for me, I've come to realize that an entrepreneur is not the type of person that you have to expect to come home, family time, family dinner, day in, day out, 365 days a year. Of course, that's not going to happen. So I've kind of removed that expectation from my table and from my plate. And by doing that, I'm, I'm allowing myself to be less frustrated when I deal with them. So all I do is I have to listen and understand to the mood, to the time, to what's going on. And then I just adjust to that. And by doing that, by adjusting myself and reducing my expectation, it helps me to support them with this ongoing mind thing and with this ongoing project thing. So most of our conversations are around, okay, I'm starting this project. Okay, I'm working on this project. Then my answer would be, oh, okay, how can I support you? How do you think you're gonna manage this? How do you think you're gonna do it? And as we do that, we become better at supporting each other. Tip number two, be ready to be someone who can go with the floor. I have seen a lot of ladies who reach out to me and say, Fungi, I'm pulling my hair out. I'm frustrated with my partner because I had planned this amazing thing. And guess what? Suddenly they came home and changed the plans. But unfortunately, an entrepreneur, remember, they are waiting for an opportunity to hit or knock the door. And as soon as that opportunity hits and knocks the door, nothing else matters. They want to run with it. So getting frustrated because they have decided 
after work they were not going to turn up at home rather they are going to go for a meeting is not going to help you you are just going to be frustrated and you're going to break down so the best way for me what has worked is to really embrace that, those change of plans and think about how i can be supportive with those change of plans maybe adjust my schedule to meet their needs and then be able to be ready to see what the next step is going to be. Can I go with them? Can I stay? What can I do? But as I do that, it means that I am reducing frustration on myself. So I am comfortable somebody changing their plans any minute, any second, and I'm comfortable with that. And I am content with the fact that things can change anytime and I'm trusting the process. So I've learned to trust the process. So my tip to you is learn to trust the process and be content and go with the flow. Tip number three, be comfortable to be alone and spending a lot of time alone. Why? Simply because entrepreneurs, they are always on the go. They never stay in one place long enough, trust me. And the best thing that ever happens is that it's either you are on board or you are off board. For me, I would say be on board with the idea of being alone. And how do you figure that out? Now you can use that time to develop yourself, to find yourself, to find what works for you, and also to learn and improve your skills and your knowledge in terms of how you can improve and be an, an, an amazing supportive partner in this whole journey of life. But the best thing is, if you are also an entrepreneur, it means that it allows you me time, that you can use that time to really focus on your project and make up for that time so that when your partner turns up back, you can now use that time to spend more quality time together in that small period that you are together. Tip number four, work on building your identity. I call this personal development. Why is this important? Simply because if you don't find yourself and create an identity that, that, is, that is meaningful to you, you are going to lose yourself in the whole process. And if you are looking, if you are a kind of person who looks for attention from your partner, then you are not going to get it because they are not, they, their mind is always out there trying to figure out the next thing. So when you choose to develop yourself and say, okay, I'm going to develop it myself, I'm going to study, maybe you could choose a topic, something that you really enjoy and improve on it so that you can become a useful asset in your home or in your relationship or in, your, in the business. You could also work as an entrepreneur on a project that could probably benefit both of you and at the same time, it's keeping you busy. You can also work and focus on projects that solves problems around you, problems around the world. I don't know, whatever it is, but personal development is gonna be key. Remember, the world that we live, in, you, we live in now is full of technology. So you imagine having a partner who is not supportive, who is clueless to the matter of once we've made money, how, how are we gonna invest it? How are we gonna use it? So you could use that time to try and learn and understand what you can be doing with the money when it comes, that's a good example, what you can be doing to help your partner grow the business, what you can be doing as an entrepreneur to improve yourself and be productive with your time. Tip number five, now this is a big one. You need to understand that entrepreneurs are very high risk takers. Simply because the way their minds are wired, they always think about the next big thing. And so they will take risks that may affect your financial position, that may affect your home, that it may affect everything that you've ever worked hard for. Trust me guys, this happens a lot of times with entrepreneurs that I've seen and even in my personal life. As crazy as it may sound, you may want to try and stop them, but trying to stop them will only frustrate you. So if you are married to an entrepreneur, you need to understand that these things are going to happen. But what makes a huge difference is how you react and respond to them, how you accept that position and see how you can be supportive. If you are dating or you're planning to date an entrepreneur, then you must think about, are you going to be comfortable with these things when they happen? Are you someone who holds on to material possessions or you are someone who just goes with the flow and if you lose something, you lose it. it. It doesn't matter because you will try again tomorrow, you know? So it's about really finding yourself in that process to say, okay, can I accept this or I don't ac accept this? Because at the end of the day, you cannot change the way entrepreneurs think. Tip number six, guys, prioritize your relationship. If you are married to an entrepreneur, there is a lot of challenges that entrepreneurs face, like we say, day in, day out. They, there are so many issues that come with starting a project, so many challenges, and they are facing a lot of negative pressure from the outside world, trust me. So the last thing that they need is that same pressure coming into the home. So my tip is 
try and separate matters what i call compartmentalize make your home a home where everybody is happy and everybody is embraced everybody feel homely and try as much as possible to make sure that it is a pressure free zone i know it's possible and it's difficult for us to separate pressures we are coming from the office we are coming back into the house and all that but find your balance and learn the art of separating things and understanding that your home is your sanctuary it's a place to hide it's a place to rest so when you come home try and change those conversations so that your conversations they focus on building your relationship nourishing each other improving your relationship and you can achieve this guys by doing small things planning a day where you just cook that nice beautiful meal a day where you just run the bath for your partner a day where you just do that those small things that go in extra my candle night dinner just really nourish your relationship because those small things they really go a long way and if your partner is an entrepreneur they will look forward to coming home and they will know that their home is a sanctuary tip number 7 get rid of all the weight that can hold you in the negative relationships that you may have now i know that some of these relationships could be our close friends could be our family could be those people that we really know that we oh my gosh it's so difficult to get rid of them but the best thing to help nourish your relationship and improve your relationship with an entrepreneur is to really stay out of the negative zone simply because the entrepreneur that you are living with they are going through a lot already and they don't need any extra pressure or anything else come, coming and especially when it has to come from you so your best bet is to close yourself in find your own balance and stay in a zone where you are nourished with positivity and with good things and with goodness happening in your life so that you are equipped to support the other person your entrepreneur you are living with who is probably going through a difficult time for this tip i recommend you read this book here which i found useful and i read it all the time and it's in my library tip number 8 please don't be a nagger You know what I mean by a nagger. Somebody who is attention seeking all the time and everything has to be about me, 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 you, 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 you. Remember the person you are living with, they are trying new things. And the last thing they want to hear is somebody who is always thinking and talking about themselves. But rather, be supportive, convert this energy that you want this attention and and focus on giving the attention to the other person. So rather than them wanting to know about you, how about you finding out how you can support them by asking these simple questions hello my darling how can i support you how's been your day what else can i do for you what are the things that you would think i should support you with this week make time in your schedule we are all busy i am an entrepreneur and i've got my own calendar which i run a very tight calendar but i always make time for my other half to ask him what it is he would love me to support him this week It could be sending a few emails, doing a few transactions, doing a few things, booking appointments, calling a few people, and by doing the arranging meetings, by doing those small things, you are being a useful tool to your partner, and they will feel and love the benefit that you are giving them. Tip number 9. Work and focus on improving your intimate life. Guys, this can be done by simple things. Remember you are the most important part in this relationship that you are with this entrepreneur partner so what do you need to do you need to think about the things that you can do for your partner to remain wanting to be intimate with you the things that you can do to improve your self confidence and improve yourself so that you can remain attractive and those things you know what they are for yourself because they are different for all of us but for me the things that i i have found that they help me improve my attractiveness is that i focus on staying fit all the time i work out a lot i eat healthy I don't just pick anything and everything and put in my mouth and also age is catching up so I focus on eating the meals for nourishment rather than for the sake of eating um I do a few things that I do book spa nights spa days date nights do those as much as you can the small time that you've got together make time for date nights just spend quality time together it's not about the quantity or the amount of times that you are together or the number of days but it's the quality that you have during the small times that you are together because remember you are you guys are always traveling and if you are dating you are going to be having this person traveling all the time so yeah those small things they sound they may sound silly or simple but they go a long way and number 10 be resourceful when the money comes in now i know startups 
when you are starting your bootstrapping and that's okay be supportive of your partner when you have to bootstrap because that is a season remember guys in life and in everything we live a life of seasons if it's a season of bootstrapping absolutely by all means be supportive of your partner with the bootstrap bootstrapping process and that may means cutting down on things that you may desire but you can forego cutting down on on your lifestyle cutting down on anything that you need to cut down and then when you are in a season when the money has started to flow in be responsible with the money as you know when you are when you're running a business when money comes in there are two things that you can possibly do with the money reinvest the money into the business or use the money to venture into new things or into investments it means that you are shifting to the next level now if you are not responsible enough with the money you are going to miss out on these things and before you know it the money will be gone and will be all spent so be responsible when the money starts to come in be financially literate be financially literate and what do i mean by that take time to study and understand how does entrepreneurship work how does businesses work because again the most important person in any entrepreneur's life is their partner because that's the first person that they have to entrust with everything that that they are doing and entrust them with the faith and with the support and so it will be sad to see you and your partner having this amazing relationship but yet your partner chooses to entrust everything that he's doing with somebody else that will end you up guys in a very difficult position whereas if you are the immediate person and you take time to invest in yourself and understand what other things you can do with your finances how do finances work this means that you can help and support your partner in making good financial decisions that will impact both of you good or bad so whatever the financial decisions that he has to make or she has to make are going to impact both of you so you might as well learn that piece and understand it because trust me at some point the money will start to come in so these are my tips for those who are wanting to hook up with entrepreneurs however just before i finish i would also like to just give a few tips for the actual entrepreneur themselves because half the time the entrepreneur is busy working hard like the, the 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 comment that i've just read and the woman is feeling not supported at all so what are the tips that i should give to the actual entrepreneur now here are my few tips number one be trustworthy guys when you are out there traveling and doing whatever you are doing your partner they need they need the full trust that you are doing what you have intended to do when you go on that trip and basically focus on the work because the other person they are focusing on the home and the kids and the chaos so they need your 100% surety that you are doing what you have traveled to do so don't break that circle of trust that's the most important thing number 2 have results in what you're doing you can't just be a starter up the rest of your life right so at some point have measurable targets that your partner or your spouse will be able to see that you've moved from a and you're now on b and now you're on c and let's see that improvement happening and number 3 let's see you hit those targets let's see you hit those moments and those good moments those few moments they are important as milestones so that your partner does not get tired in supporting you in something that never hits a good number so i hope these tips have been useful to you to help you improve your relationship while you're dating or while you're married to an entrepreneur So I would love to hear from you on the things that I have mentioned. Is there anything that resonates with you and how has been your journey? And if you are enjoying these videos guys, remember to subscribe, remember to tag a friend and remember to share this content because I enjoy sharing this platform with you. Till we meet again. Bye bye.